Greetings to all. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, everyone. We would like to thank you for joining us for the 33rd edition of the Annual Investment Meeting Webinar Series. My name is Karen Bizon, and I'll be your MC for today. The Annual Investment Meeting is the largest investment platform in the world. An initiative of the UAE Ministry of Economy, AIM has been promoting a healthier global economy by linking investment opportunities to fast-growing economies and their six key pillars, foreign direct investment, foreign portfolio investment, small and medium enterprise, startups, and future cities, with a special event, One Belt, One Road. Just a few housekeeping notes before we get started. If you experience any issues with your audio or video during the webinar, just refresh your browser and that should take care of everything. And if you have any questions during the presentation, please do feel free to post your questions in the chat box as we will have a Q&A round with our speakers at the end of the workshop. The topics for today's webinar is Unleashed, the power of branding to boost your business. A live interactive one on workshop created and with small businesses and entrepreneurs to help them with the right branding. The workshop will offer practical tips on how SMEs can build their brands by utilizing a powerful toolkit that involves positioning, messaging, and visuals. This workshop is intended to help businesses elevate their brand marketing to better navigate these difficult times. Today, we are joined by Ms. Sena Bagersht, Global Engagement Advisor for Brand Movie and Founder of Tamakan. Ms. Sena is a strategy digital comms, innovation and entrepreneur government and institutional consultant and founder of Tamakan, an entrepreneurship platform that shares knowledge in the areas of funding, branding, marketing, social media, leadership, franchising and technology. She teaches SME how to mitigate failure by focusing on the fundamentals of business success and leveraging technology and innovation. And so, Ms. Sena, the stage is yours. Um, hi, everyone. I hope you can see me. I just need to switch on my camera uh, to be visible. Am I, can, can you guys see me? Uh, okay, let me see. I'm go going yes, to share my you. screen. Uh, you're visible. You. Yeah. All right, great. Um, uh, Lulu, you need to turn off your screen so I can share mine. Okay, brilliant. Um, yeah, so uh, the topic today, very, very uh, relevant. And to be honest, over the last uh, several weeks, uh, I've been inundated by, um, by this topic, you know, and it's, been, and it's covered the whole gamut from personal branding, uh, business branding, corporate branding. Uh, and it's been very, very interesting because uh, with all of the challenges that, that have happened, it seems that people are beginning to realize just how important it is to project the right kind of brand, the right messaging, and to create the right kind of perception in the minds of stakeholders. Uh, and so um, with small businesses, uh, I know there is so much flux, there's so much disruption, there's so much uncertainty, uh, but this is where uh, we, we've seen some very, very interesting uh, businesses come forward. Some of them have thrived, some of them have, uh, you know, had to change their business model. Uh, and it's all because of the changes that are happening around us. Uh, the way people buy things is different, the way they explore, the way they uh, procure them, uh, you know, with all of the social distancing. The incredible thing that has happened is that all of us have had to adapt and at breakneck speed. Uh, and, and, you know, with, with all of the pundits right now, the discussion is just how incredibly uh, interesting it is that people have um, adjusted so quickly. So here, uh, the first thing, and uh, there's a, a bit of a double uh, imprint there, but uh, uh, I'll go over the slides, each slide very carefully. Uh, so what is branding? When you talk about branding, what, what is branding? Why, why is it so important? Um, think of branding as your 
calling card if you're a person. So immediately when a person sees you, they say, oh, we know Sana. We know Sana stands for innovation. She's a straight talker. Uh, she's somebody who uh, um, is compassionate. She's open to ideas. And why is that? Because this is maybe some of the values that I project through the things that I do, the programs that I support, my teachings, my, uh, um, the, my writings as well, but everything, all of my touch points. And I'm gonna talk more about touch points in a bit. Uh, for a business, it is equally important. Um, it is the, the one thing that encapsulates the, the business, the soul, the spirit, the whole, the whole uh, uh, offering uh, of your brand in a few simple images, words, perceptions. So people just look at it and they relate, they know exactly who you are, what you are, what the product is, what it's selling, how it makes them feel. So this is why branding is so important. And uh, the, the one thing uh, as a bra branding practitioner over the years, I have to say, even the large companies get it wrong. Even the you know, large institutions, governments, public organizations get it wrong. And the, the, the kind of wrong that happens is just the misalignment. There, you know, something happens here and then something happens here, but it's confusing because you look at the product, the product says something, the, the messaging says something, the social media says something, the CEO speech says something else. So this is why with branding, it's so important to create something that is very clear and it is something that um, can be reinforced and it's very, very tangible. So here um, uh, we're talking about branding during these tough times. Why is it important? Simply because you have to differentiate. Uh, there's so many things happening and I've written uh, a few articles about uh, some of the interesting things that are happening in, 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 in the SME business. And what basically is happening is some businesses are, you know, uh, dying. Um, and some are emerging from those and they are creating a Phoenix uh, phenomenon. They're, they're either uh, buying an existing thing and they're revamping it, they're rejigging it, they're rebranding it, a few technical uh, and tactical uh, uh, fine tuning and they are coming back. Uh, more fit, more agile for the current climate. Uh, so there is a lot of flux. Businesses dying, others replacing them and new ideas coming up because we have a totally different paradigm in terms of the way we live, we work, and we are processing all of these changes. So the most important thing that you need to be aware of is you really need to make sure you are aligned. Okay, one year ago, you are totally aligned. You know, you, you had the right product, the right positioning, the right uh, uh, segmentation, the right uh, marketing strategy and all of that but that might not be relevant now as a business. Uh, you, you, might, you might not be able to survive these times. A lot of things have shifted. So what you need to do, what I want to do is take you through a few slides. I know we have uh, an hour here, so I'm gonna try to put a lot of information in a short period of time, um, but I'll try to take you through some of the most fundamental things that you need to address as you contemplate the way you move forward. So is it time for you to review your branding strategy? I think this is very important. Uh, look at what you have, uh, do an audit. So what we do when we're called in to a company or a business is we, we run a branding audit. Uh, we see their collateral, we see their touch points, the messaging from the website to the newsletters, to what the customer service people are saying, to the way the product is delivered, to the customer experience. And we see if there are any um, areas of dissonance. And here, this is what you guys need to think about as well, is you need to go back, and sometimes it's very painful to do that, especially uh, when you're in love with your product, you think it has served you well, there's a lot of legacy, there's a lot of uh, uh, you know, respect for the brand, reputation but you still need to go through everything, you know, break it up into small parts, be very critical. And if you're not able to do that, bring in, you know, create a focus group. And this is where 
uh, you don't even hire, have to hire a company. Just bring in your friends, your family, people who will tell you very, very honestly what they think and get them to break your product into small bits and analyze everything. So uh, what we need to do is we'll, we'll talk about a branding strategy. Uh, we'll talk about, excuse me a moment. I'm trying to move a box here from the front. Okay, so first we'll look at what, what are the rock solid principles that haven't changed. Uh, and then we'll talk about what has changed that what, what you need to, to do to adapt to the new normal. So what hasn't changed is you guys have to have a great product. You know, nothing is going to uh, cover that. So make sure you have a great product. And when I say a great product, it needs to fill a need. There has to be somebody who will want your product. Uh, it could be a product or it could be a service. A lot of us are in the service business whether you're a content creator, a designer, an event organizer, make sure that you um, as well are able to look at, to address what you have and look at things very, very critically, but you need to be relevant. You have to have a great service, great product and something that people want. The one thing that hasn't changed and for, for me, especially I'm a huge proponent of great design. Design is king guys. The one thing that really stands out when you are, you, you are amidst your competitors is one thing that just takes you way above the others is great design. Uh, make sure your product looks good. Make sure your visual elements are good. Your language, guys, there are so many times. Um, I see amazing companies, um, great websites, but the English is poor. The minute you see something that is just not right, it really degrades your experience. So here, when I talk about a design, we're talking about the visual, we're talking about content, we're talking about uh, symbolism, we're talking about some of the, the, the key, the key um, messages for each of your brands. And it has to be very clear what your messages are about your, uh, your, your brands. Uh, another thing that hasn't changed, guys, is alignment. Uh, and here, these are just very simple messages. These are the kind of things that we do for clients. You know, you have to stick to your colors, stick to your, your, your branding elements. Sometimes we work with founders who uh, suddenly, you know, develop uh, a need for, you know, change. Uh, you have to be married to your branding once you have it, because what creates, uh, a, uh, you know, uh, a great brand is something that is consistent, that looks good wherever you see it, you know what it is. You know, think of the Nike swoosh, for example, or Nike branding or Coca-Cola or others. You always see they use the same colors, the same fonts, the same design elements, the same layouts. So it's all about uh, consistent, consistency in terms of visuals and, and messaging. Um, it's also about extendability. And I know a lot of people don't think much about that, but sometimes your brand needs to grow. And, and make sure that whatever you have allows it to grow. So maybe it's in the color palette, maybe a couple of neutrals, maybe other things that can be added to enrich your, your, uh, your branding and allows you also to go into a sub-brand sometimes or you want to extend into new products. Maybe during this COVID period, you want to uh, experiment and see if you need to add a couple more lines. So, you know, make sure that your branding also allows you to be extendable in that way. Um, it's about memorability. I know this is very simple what you're seeing here, but it's, it's really important for your customer to see your brand. I have a client who, did, who just finished a beautiful uh, space, uh, you know, uh, you know beautiful, beautifully designed space, but, but I was uh, a bit disappointed because the branding wasn't there. It wasn't clear, you know? It looked gorgeous, but it just didn't seem to, to um, evoke uh, what the branding uh, stood for or the elements of the branding. So here, make sure that you're always there, you know, in little ways and the, the client can all, always see who you are. Uh, it's about looking good, guys. Again, design, uh, social media, you know, look good in social media. There's so many people right now using uh, templates. If you use a template, use it through. You don't want any, you know, dissonance as people 
go through your uh, Instagram or your Facebook, what, you know, you, you jump from one thing to another, be consistent. It's all about creating the right kind of focus. Um, it's about creating emotive connections with your customers. And how we do that sometimes is we do that through storytelling. So I'll give you, I'll give you a quick example. Um, and although I'm not in the coffee business, uh, my, my family is, and you know, uh, specialty coffee for many years. So the way they do it is they talk about the legacy of my grandfather. You know, it's a three generation uh, specialty coffee business out of Ethiopia, exporting everywhere. But we always talk about our grandfather, our father, and, and all of that. Why? Because people love to connect to brands that have a story. So here, if you have something that is very relatable, use it because this is what is going to make us, uh, people prefer maybe your brand over something else and feel a certain affinity that is not just about the product, it's about the extra intangibles. Um, marketing, so we all know uh, that, you know, with, with any kind of brand, uh, brand marketing, there's the brand building side, but there's also the tactical, the tactical side. The difference is the brand building brings, builds your brand, it's about the awareness, what you do, how you do it, and all of that. But the tactical has the call to action, the CTA. So try to make sure that whatever you do in terms of brand building and tactical campaigns are aligned. Uh, and, and here, um, uh, I know we can't talk more about that, but it really is about creating campaigns where you have a good balance and you're able to, within each of those areas, be able to hone into what are the different channels that work for brand building and what works for, uh, for the tactical side. So here, uh, just, um, you know, just telling, telling uh, you like it is right now, uh, COVID has changed a lot of things. What you need to do, the kind of soul searching that you need to do, the, the auditing, the, uh, you know, the reviews and all of that is number one, make sure that your product or service is viable. That, or maybe I should say still viable. It might've been viable before, make sure that it is still viable. Um, if you're entering into a new product, you're launching a new service, make sure that it is viable. Make sure that there is a market for what you sell. Sometimes, uh, and entrepreneurs, I, I, I counsel and I work with a lot of entrepreneurs and you see really cool stuff, amazing products, amazing merchandising, the product design and all of that. But in the end, it doesn't work because there really wasn't uh, a market for it. So make sure whatever you have, whatever you um, uh, you do, there is a very viable market for it. Uh, the other thing is make sure you are still relevant. There are new brands that are coming every day. Uh, some of them are really cool. You know, they they espouse a different ethos. They come in with you know for the Gen Xers. They in incorporate uh, experiences and they, you know, so much uh, uh, other elements. So make sure you are still relevant to your specific um, uh, audience, that they have not moved away from what you are uh, offering them. So this means you have to know your landscape. You have to know uh, what your um, audience is seeing, who is um, uh, coming to them, who is uh, reaching out to them, are they being solicited by other things that could uh, erode your market share? So you really need to make sure that you're still relevant. Uh, and, and of course, uh, make sure that your branding is very aligned with your business goals. And I know that sounds like a no brainer, but I've been in situations where uh, we get called in, it's huge corporations, and uh, they see there is something wrong with the business. And the reason is because sometimes uh, the, the, the front desk um, guy says something, the reception says something, the salesperson says something, the CEO some, says something else. So make sure whatever it is that you use, it is aligned and make sure, this is very important, make sure everyone in your business has access to, to, to that, that in, information. So what we do, our proprietary tool is called Brackstall. Uh, Brackstall, B-R-A-C-T-S-T-A-L, and it stands for Brand Acuity Strategic Alignment. And what it is, is it's just a one-pager 
and we make sure the CEO has it and we make sure the delivery guys have it just so everybody's on the same page and everybody is building the brand in everything they do. Now let's take a, a bit of a deeper dive into branding strategy. Um, so what you need to do that's very, very important is you need to uh, review your vision. You need to review your mission. Um, you need to refine it. You need to align it. And you need to make it your guiding light. Uh, and here, this is the, this, the concept that I told you about where it's no good it being in the CEO's uh, uh, laptop, nice, beautiful PowerPoint templates if your staff don't have it. Make sure that it is some, something that the whole, the whole uh, company, the whole business is energized by. Uh, so here, um, how have things changed? Um, you, where you might need to change your branding is in the way people consume things, uh, in, in their buying habits. You're gonna find that a lot of people right now order things online or, you know, and of course here, e-commerce is, is, is something that is so critical right now. And I'm gonna talk about it in a couple of slides. But here, if you are selling, um, if, you're, if you're selling online and somebody's going to deliver, to receive your product at home, you need to look at that package and see if all of the information that needs to be on the package is on it. Because typically in a shop, there might be an opportunity for that person to speak to the shopkeeper, or to the waiter, get more information and, and, and other stuff. But when it is delivered home, you need to make sure whatever you're delivering is able to accommodate the new way of interacting with your, your product. The one thing that you also need to see is once something is online, your uh, uh, customers are going to be uh, bombarded with a lot of really cool stuff. Why? Because everybody's using the same online environment. So make sure you know what's out there, what are the trends, uh, and see what are the things that people are starting to use in terms of their market, marketing as well how they are ap uh, appealing to your customers. There, there may be some things that you can try. And right now, to be honest, there is just an amazing um, you know, amount of resources that are available. Uh, you know, and I'm talking about all of the providers, whether it's Shopify, whether it's GoDaddy, um, whether it's Facebook, a lot of case studies, a lot of learnings, a lot of communities being built. And the one thing that you can do is really go in there and learn, learn how it's being, what, you know, what, what's happening. And learn that also a lot of these tech, technological uh, algorithms are changing all the time. So you have to be on top of the changes as well. Uh, so here, your positioning, your brand positioning. Uh, is it the same brand positioning that you were using before? Was it working before? Maybe now you can go wider. If you're, if you're in an e-commerce uh, situation, this that naturally naturally expands the scope of your 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 uh, reach. How, but but what you need to know about that is how you 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 are able to leverage whatever niche you're going for. I'm a big believer in actually establishing your niche and going for it uh, to the nail. You know, with complete focus and being making you know being the best at this very specific niche. So. Uh, so what you need to do is you need to see, are you too narrow? Are you too wide? Uh, the cool thing about digital is it actually allows you um, to, to, do, uh, to do some very fine target, targeting in terms of geography, taste, income, psychographics, you know, and all of that. And it's extremely empowering. So the one thing that you need to see is your brand position, positioning versus your reach, uh, the potential to maybe go wider or to go narrower. Uh, and then again, you need to look at the audience and see, you know, maybe the, before you were reaching, you were reaching out to people and it was a very rational proposition. You know, I want you to buy this product because it's A, B, C, very rational, you're appealing to their sense of logic. But maybe, you know, you are going into a new market where you need to also connect emotionally with, with your constituents. So 
a lot of very interesting things are happening. And the one thing that I can advise all of you is just really go out there and keep learning and learn from others. And it's okay to, to copy different strategies because uh, it's not rocket science. It's, it's really a matter of looking at things that are tested and work well. So your, your brand positioning is typically, you know, the benefits, the characteristics, the features of, of what uh, you're, you're offering. And here, uh, you know, the one thing that I do advise is a lot of you already know this stuff, but not many of you actually write it down. Write it down in a very systematic way so that you're able to look at it and, you, you know, refine it and see the connecting dots and see if there are things that just don't match up and also open it up to others to, to co-create with you. So uh, uh, your, your brand promise, it's, it's a, uh, I, love, I love the concept of the brand promise because it just really focuses you, you know, whether you are targeting moms or you're targeting golfers or, or you know, athletes or whatever it is, you know, just, just try to distill what, what you do into a very simple brand promise. It can even be one or two words, guys. It doesn't have to be complicated, but just know what your brand promise is and try to uh, align with it. Uh, so when I was in corporate comms, uh, uh, a lot of times we, um, we try to advise big companies, corporates, how to, uh, how to refine these things. And the one thing that really helps is the brand values. And I'll, and I'll try to, to draw a visual picture for you just so, uh, so, so you understand. So think, think of it as a brand footprint, right? Think of your brand footprint. You say, what is my brand footprint? You say, my brand footprint, if my brand was to walk in right now, that brand would be, and just write those values, uh, innovative, um, intelligent, uh, youthful, or not, I'm here I'm just giving you some examples, uh, dynamic, uh, you know, resilient. Once you have these, the, the, the idea is to create a, a tiny footprint, draw it out and put these values. Why this is so interesting and why it, it's very helpful is because it will help direct you in terms of your spending, your, and it will rein you in. If it is something outside of your brand footprint, you won't do it. And we used to do that with a lot of the big corporations that, uh, uh, that sponsored, um, you know, the big matches, you know, they have their names on the, the, the fo football matches or they sponsor, uh, you know, events and all of that. We tell them, does it fit your footprint? Uh, and they, uh, you know, because they come to, they would come to me, for example, and say, this is a sponsorship uh, offer. Should we go for this? This is sponsoring the, you know, Bar Barcelona football thing or, you know, whatever it is. And the, what we do is we tell them, go back to who you are. Does it match your brand? If it does, go for it. If it doesn't, you have to say, to, 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 to respond with a very unequivocal no. Uh, and this actually helps a lot of people focus. And this is what a lot I see even with small brands. Sometimes they're all over the place. Just focus, focus on what you need to, to do. Uh, and, and here, um, why it's so important to have values is because you can also build a community. Building a community is like marketing gold. These are people who are your supporters, your advocates, your influencers, people who will, uh, you know, fight, fight for you if there was anything negative about you. So create a, a community of people uh, who, who, who love your brand. So this, I, and I equate it to the concept of tribe. Uh, and here, how do you do that? You, you know, you try to get personal, you understand, uh, you know, you create maybe a platform. And this is sometimes what we do is we create community platforms where uh, people come to connect, you, you give them uh, other things, you know, and here it's very difficult to talk about, um, you know, one community because I don't know what kind of businesses are out there, but it is about, connecting with them, giving them a lot of uh, love, you know, and this could be in advice, in, in connectivity, in uh, perks and all of that. 
and then they grow to think of you as something that is part of their lives. So one thing, I was talking about touch points earlier, I mentioned it and I, and I promised I would come back to it. So when you talk about touch points, uh, and this is what I do for the government as well, the more touch points you have, the better your visibility. One of the things to think about is um, uh, typically someone will retain your brand. They will remember who you are or what you said. Um, if they've seen you, maybe an average of the magic number at least, you know, I don't know if it's scientifically pro uh, proven, but it's always mentioned that way, is eight times. So if someone is coming through, say, Dubai Airport or Abu Dhabi Airport, they might see something, you know, a flyer, and then they might see a billboard, and then they might see a tune, and then they might see the social media thing. And they, the more triggers you have, the more you will connect and you will, you will be memorable. Otherwise, there's just so much noise, guys. There's so much noise. And you guys need to figure out what your touch points are. Uh, it might not be a, a big board. But it might be uh, an email. It could be uh, it could be you know a message of thanks. It could be the way your your customer service person calls back and 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 thanks a, a, a customer. So it's all uh, of these little things. The one thing that I also tell, uh, especially governments and larger institutions, is leverage some of the stuff that's already out. So for example, if you're someone who sends out bills or you send out other things leverage space that's on it to do something else. If you're somebody who uh, has a landing page with events, leverage that page for other things as well. So it's all about extendability. And this is where the more you work with partners, the more you can expand your space of influence. I am a big advocate of um, stakeholder relations. And this is what I do a lot for, for some of my clients is just really try to connect them so they start using each other's assets. And it empowers everyone in the end. So here, uh, the, the message is, please try to know what your customer's touch points are. Uh, so if, for example, you're going for my mother's uh, age group, you're not going to see her much on, uh, you know, on the internet. You know? You're not going to see her in, in a lot of places. So you might need to... Um, reach her through uh, some other channels that are much more accessible uh, to her. So here, there, and this is, this is just uh, some touch points. Honestly, with touch points, you can go forever. There's so many ways that you can put your brand out there. And so the one thing that's very important is you have to be consistent across all of your touch points. And I love the fact that here, I'm just looking at this very quickly, speeches, presentations, Telephone, word of mouth, trade shows, uh, proposals, uh, uh, experiential uh, sites as well. So it's all about how you come up with one concept and you drill across to everything. I know it's sometimes it's it sounds like it's uh, boring, but believe me, the more consistent you are, the more you will be memorable, and the more people will retain your message. Uh, and so uh, another very important slide. Uh, and, and, and here, I, you would be surprised, even big brands sometimes get it wrong. This is your customer's journey. Guys, please know your customer's journey. Uh, and this is, uh, and, and you can see here, there's three different uh, stages to it. The pre-buying, uh, pre the buying, and then the post. Know what your customer goes through. The more you know this, the science of this, the more I think you will be uh, successful. Why? Because you will be able to know that your customers, before they come and buy pizza at your place, they're very likely to uh, see the flyer that you put in a certain building or uh, you know, a word of mouth from a community on Facebook or whatever it is. So know what your customer's touch points are, pre, during, and the post. Post is really where you start building the community by going back to them with, with you know, by showing them love and the fact that you really appreciate their business. Um, once you know those touch points, then you can get into the right kind of fit, the right kind of marketing. Uh, and here, I'm honestly trying to advise you to keep it focused. Why? Because this will um, help you save money. And I've had situations where customers come, you know, there's 
a, a, a big car wash company. I, I don't want to mention names. They're in Abu Dhabi and they want to do a TV commercial. Why the heck would you do that? Most people who will go into a, to a certain car wash are people in the vicinity. So here it's, 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 it's very uh, intuitive. It's very practical. It's very logical. But a lot of big players get it uh, wrong as well. So here I'm just saying keep it simple, direct and focus because this will help you go far with a smaller budget. Uh, so uh, co the very critical thing that has happened is digital. Guys, if you don't have a digital interface, get one. It's so important to align. If you have a brick and mortar, align it with your digital. If you don't have, if you're closing your brick and mortar, enhance your digital and go all the way. But it's so important to get there, to get to set it up and, 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 and become a player because that's where things are moving. Um, uh, here, uh, keep it very simple. The message here is frictionless. Uh, this is just uh, something that I pulled out. This is for ASDA, but it's simple. There's not many words, you know? Simple image, few words. And here, uh, keep your digital journey focused. Please don't let people go around your website trying to find things. This is the biggest problem with websites. They become so fancy that uh, nobody wants to navigate them. And, and for me, if I go in, if something is not easy to navigate, I don't go uh, again. So keep it simple. This is, I, I'll just take you through uh, maybe a couple of seconds. This is a platform that we created for uh, a government uh, um, uh, event uh, organizer, but it's also something that is, um, that supports uh, initiatives and programming. So it's quite, it's quite versatile, but let me just see if it opens up. Um, let me see. I don't know if it's okay. It has open, opened up. So this is this is for uh, the Jordan uh, Festival, uh, and and it is just a, a visually uh, interesting, a visually interesting uh, space where you can you can go in. You can welcome uh, to the exhibitors virtual demonstration. You can go Taking into the conference spaces. Uh, you can go into the exhibition spaces. Yeah, let me see. I'm sorry here, guys. I'm a bit clumsy trying to navigate this. Uh, but what you do here is um, you're able to go into the conference spaces, the, the, the partnership uh, spaces as well. And the whole idea is it tries to bridge the gap that has been created, guys, uh, because of COVID, a lot of events have been canceled. People are struggling to see how to make to make uh, um, sense of it. So the idea here is to just really create a space that at least mirrors the site, a real site, but at the same, but at the same time, uh, it provides more connectivity. provides more connectivity and you're able to download information and all of that. Uh, there are sites like that, uh, you know, it's not just us who do it. There are a few uh, ones that are coming up, but the most important thing that I wanted to, to show you here is think about experiences. Right now, this is what people want. They want something that will give them a sense of, um, uh, a sense of, uh, you know, still being engaged in, in events, but in a way that is more immersive maybe, and something that, is, that also has longevity. So I'm gonna come out of this so I can continue with the rest of the presentation, but I think you guys have an idea of what I'm talking about here. So let me see. Uh, so with your uh, conferences, your webinars, you're, and if you're working, at, you're working in a company and you want to uh, organize things for your staff, these are some of the experiences that are popping up. Guys, whatever you're doing, whether it's in retail, uh, in any kind of business, look at the, the digital or the experiential side of things. So here, if I was to uh, pull together a few things of just really solid advice, I would say the following. One, be bold. Be creative, be flexible. We are in the age of agility. You have to be able to, to, to twist and turn quick.
quickly and smoothly and effectively. Collaborate with others. You can't do everything. Nobody can do everything these days. You have to collaborate with partners who will elevate you and who will, uh, uh, you know, who will help all of you, uh, uh, you know, will help you, will help you achieve your goals, basically. Uh, I'm getting a few messages here uh, that I need to look at. Be focused. Uh, source wisely. Source wisely is interesting because what's happening right now is um, digital. Uh, COVID has create, has really enhanced the digital space. So people right now are starting to work from home. And then some entities are realizing that instead of talking to Abdullah or Naveed or Mary here in Abu Dhabi, might as well speak to someone in, in Singapore or Japan or whatever. So th the issue here is it's a little bit of a threat to contract workers and freelancers is the, the, the globalization of the gig economy. But what it does do for uh, SMEs is it enables you to really source smartly and wisely by going broader. Uh, maintain your focus, work with the right people. Uh, and I've seen a lot of SMEs uh, close even though they have amazing ideas. It's because they just don't have the right people or the vision is not clear for the partners or something like that. So, so work with the, right, with the right partners, build the right kind of team, stay ahead of trends, keep learning and then go digital. So these are the, p the pieces of advice that I would offer. And I think, um, Lulu, I think there are some questions that, I, that are popping up. Uh, let um, me see. Yes, Ms. Anna. So I think you're done with the presentation and everything, right? Yes, yes, uh, yeah, correct. That's very insightful workshop. Um, right now we will go ahead and take some time for the questions and also right. just a reminder um, to all the viewers, please be sure to type your questions into the chat box, which will be in the right hand side of your screen. And if Ms. Anna will not be able to answer all the questions, she will address all the unanswered uh, after the webinar and we will send also via uh, email, right? So um, let's have a look at a question, Ms. Anna, and we'll try to cover it until the end of this uh, uh, okay, I think I'm trying to see the time. question. Yeah. So sure. we have the first question. Um, I'm going to read it to you and uh, maybe Please. you can provide the answer. The first question is how much normally should SMEs budget for branding investment? Mm, that's, a very, that's a good question uh, because branding is actually part of marketing. It's part of the whole marketing paradigm. Uh, so branding is about doing something that is uh, tangible with a start and an end thing. So it's just really uh, improving what you have. But if you're talking about brand building as a segment of uh, advertising and uh, uh, you know, marketing, it needs to be something that is continuous. Uh, in the past, we used to say, well, you know, and we were a bit biased, you know, so we used to say uh, you, you, any company has to uh, earmark an amount of, I would say maybe, 10% to build their business because you, you can't build a business unless you're continuously marketing. Uh, if it is for the pure, uh, the pure um, act of just upgrading your, your, uh, your collateral, whether it is the website or whatever, that, that should be something that is quite affordable for a lot of people. Sometimes you might need a simple upgrade. You might not have to uh, you know, change everything. And, and to be honest, there are some amazing um, uh, designers out there. Uh, I mean, if somebody wanted something, connect with me. We, uh, you know, we have, we're a, a design company, but whether you work with us or someone, someone else, just really um, uh, reach out to designers who can look, look at your material uh, uh, you know, and, and improve it for you. So it might, it might be, uh, Karen, it might be a simple thing or it might be a big thing. It just depends on, what kind of an overhaul you need for your brand? Yes, okay. And at least they got the recommendation from you already. That's already one point. And the second question is, branding can sometimes cost a lot. So are there any smart ways that you can recommend to build brand identity that would not require any huge budget? I think it's also the same uh, as the first, but you have yeah. more. Well, brand building, uh, the, the, the secret sauce, the secret recipe is first get your branding cleaned up. You can work with a freelance designer, you know, always uh, see their work ahead of time, uh, get your branding cleaned up. And then after that, uh, make sure you have a toolkit. 
And that toolkit, for example, uh, you know, for social media would be templates. Make sure you have your templates ready and the designer sends you all the templates and you can uh, add the content in a very intelligent way. So there are shortcuts. There are ways to do it quickly and cheaply. Uh, and, and, and right now with social media, honestly, it's, it's become very, very easy to do it using a very, very small budget. There's a lot of ways. Uh, the third question, um, what are the essential qualities for SMEs branding? Um, okay, the, the, the essentials. The, the, to be honest with, uh, with SME branding, as in other branding as well, uh, I would advise that you actually, the, I just spoke about the toolkit. Have something on your laptop, your, your staff's laptop, that is all the elements. Don't complicate life. You know, keep it very simple. Uh, and the visuals, keep them very simple. If you, if you have product shots, have your product shots and just use these, use it in a very simple way. So the essential thing is always stick to the same font, the same kind of placement, the same layout and use it consistently. And you're going to see also, the more consistent you are, um, the more your social media account, the better it, it will look. It'll just have a certain kind of polish. Uh, the other trick, and here I'm giving you another big secret, is yeah. uh, create a message, a message sheet. Call, I call it a cheat sheet. The customers like it when I say cheat sheet. A cheat sheet of like 10 messages five, or five, six, seven messages that describes who you are. For example, if you're a pizza place, we make the best Chicago deep dish. Uh, we are, uh, you know, we source our, uh, you know, our uh, vegetables from you know organic uh, sources. Whatever whatever your compelling uh, qualities are, distill it into one cheat sheet of key messages. And those are the messages you would want to repeat in your social media, in your messages, in your flyers, and all of that. The one big mistake that I see with a lot of SMEs is sometimes they put too much content. Keep it simple and focused. All right, so it's simplicity and chichi and uh, you know uh, consistency, yeah. Um, yes. Our next question: How can one use social media to develop a brand? I think it's it's also connected. Yeah. And connected. Right. Again, with social media, and that is that's your goldmine, guys. Social media is your goldmine. Uh, the the one thing that you do need to be aware of is uh, when we do a lot of. Um, uh, we give guidance to clients. Uh, sometimes it's a big hospital or it's a big government entity or it's, you know, a, a corporate entity, or sometimes it could be a smaller business. Um, know where your um, customers are. Uh, so as an example, um, Twitter is used a lot by the government. So UAE government, Arab governments, most governments, they use Twitter. But here especially, uh, Twitter is, uh, is, um, is, a, is a, an incredible communication tool for reaching uh, the, the government sector. Uh, a lot of Arabs, a lot of Arab women, Emiratis, uh, will be on Instagram, right? Uh, you know, because of the visual element and, and a lot of that. Um, a lot of expats tend to veer, and may, maybe even the older generation. I'm, I'm a big fan of, uh, of Facebook, uh, you know. Uh, I'm a bit old school in that sense. But, I, but, but Facebook is a place where you can engage with more thought leadership, where, where, they, where you need more content, where maybe you're a consultant, you're somebody who needs to appeal uh, with, with arguments and discussions and that sort of thing. Uh, and LinkedIn uh, obviously is uh, just uh, incredible in terms of the kind of reach that it can give you. Uh, and, and LinkedIn is more uh, appropriate for those of you who are consultants, who are content writers, who are advisors. Uh, for me recently, I, uh, I posted something and, and it was incredible. I had like 400, I, my reach was 400,000 views and I didn't even, wow. uh, I didn't even, you know, boost it. So here it's so important to identify so for the brand building question know where you want to focus and there are some businesses that quite smartly say we can't do everything you know we don't have the bandwidth 
And we don't even think that's necessary. We just want to focus on maybe these two channels and really do them well. So here it really needs to align with who you are, what you're doing and what, what uh, your product focuses. That's very good, Tip. Um, the fifth question that we can, so at least uh, I think we still have uh, 10 minutes left. Uh, can we change or reimagine our brand mid corporate cycle? And can you share with us an effective way of doing it? Say that again, Karen. Can we change or reimagine our brand mid corporate cycle? And can you share with us an effective way of the, doing it? Can we imagine the brand mid corporate cycle? Mid corporate, MID. Yeah, MID. Mid oh, okay. Uh, oh, you absolutely. What you need to do is you need to uh, you need to review your brand continuously. A brand is a live. Uh, uh, entity and 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 the way that you would do it my my big advice and and this is how we were why I work with some of the government entities as well is um, customer journey go back to your customer journey mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. see what is happening over there and and the other thing also is um, uh, get your customers in you know let them co-create with you uh, just so you see that you know you're 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 appealing to them, with the right kind of messaging, the right kind of offering. And sometimes you will learn from some of these focus groups, whether it's a Zoom session or something where you gather people, um, sometimes the kind of insights that you will have is you're offering this, but they're actually interested in this, you know? And, and, and so uh, it's very, very important for you to actually um, run some of these sessions periodically and, and, and always involve your customers, always involve your customers. So customer idea and sometimes like, um, you know, just uh, mutual or common uh, discussion with, it's very, very important, yeah? Absolutely. And, and now, nowadays they call it co-creation, they call it, uh, um, you, know, you know, the whole agile mindset is about getting different people to come in and to build things. And with some of your customers, you'd be surprised. They would love to be part of something like that. Yes, yes, absolutely true. Okay, uh, moving on to our next question. What should I pay more attention to in terms of branding among the pandemic's crisis? Uh, I, I wrote um, an article recently about um, the malls, when the malls came back, you know? So it was very quiet in the malls, and then suddenly, and then suddenly it said, sale, 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 sale. And in my article, I said, the one thing that would have been nice is in instead of saying sale, it would have been nice to say, welcome back. We missed you. You know what I mean? So uh, the one thing that you need to remember is that people really are, you know, they're really struggling with this. They, they're trying to process it. They're trying to uh, go back to their normal lives. They want to be close to their friends, their family, and all of that. So the one thing that you could do is just show your customers that you understand where they're coming from. So, so yeah, I mean, a, a quick thing would be if you're sending something, you do delivery, maybe a little note, you know, hang in there, you know, or little tips or, you know, uh, things like that. I went to a hospital recently and the nurse was just so sweet. Uh, you know, she, I, I had my mask and she said, you know, this is really going to scrape your ears. And she gave me yeah. the little bracket thing that fits in the back, which is just such a nice thing to do. She didn't have to do that, but it just made me feel special, you know. So it's, it's just being able to understand that people are going through a tough time and just trying to relate to them in, in, in this way. So I think like little notes and just a very simple things, you know, that they're doing, it's, that create more connection. Absolutely. And I'll tell you something, Karen, here, um, uh, Sheikh Mohammed here, Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed, um, he said a very simple word, you know, when COVID came. And he said, don't worry. And in Arabic, it's just such a beautiful expression. But it became the rallying cry for people. People would see it. And it would give them a sense of, ah, uh, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm going to be okay, you know. So sometimes little words, little messages 
can create a huge mindset shift. And those are some of the things to think about is how you as a business can do something very simple that could make your, your customer's life better. Yeah, that's wonderful, very nice. Um, what are the current trends? I think because, you know, I feel really good about all these uh, topics, but I think we have to move on. Um, what are the current trends that big brands are following in terms of branding? Um, some of the, the new emerging trends, I would say, is really a focus on uh, community. Um, and here, when I, when I talk about community, it's about um, identifying where some of these communities can actually be built, you know, and, and we see communities, Facebook is really big on communities now, you know, there's so many uh, groups and uh, there's, there's groups for practically everything. So what brands are trying to do is they're trying to see how to connect, not with the big influencers, but with the micro influencers. And these are people who um, are respected. They have a strong voice within their very specific space that they occupy. Uh, and, and, I, and I see that uh, uh, happening in, in interesting ways. So the big brands typically before, they would, they would just you know, throw out so much money into you know, an integrated campaign. You know, remember with all the touch points, but now, many of them are becoming more focused and identifying those touch points are much more critical, but with the, with the, the, um, the objective of building a long-term community of people who are loyal to them. And this is where I think with, um, with brands uh, and, and for, with smaller brands, smaller businesses, um, try to put your face forward as well. You know, it's nice to see the product, but I would love to see Karen uh, talking about the product, you know, as the owner of the business. You know what I mean? Yeah. Try to create an, an emotive uh, connection, whether it's your staff coming and talking about the product or whatever. Don't just show the product because the one product is like so many other products, but there's only one Karen showing her product and really showing how passionate she is. So try to evoke that. The big brands can't do it as much. Yeah. So the small think, brands think, have that yeah. advantage. I think really the review, personal review is really, really important of the customer. Absolutely. And yeah. this is why now you're seeing a lot of the big brands as well. You're seeing like the, you know, the, the founders are trying to, to engage, you know, because they realize people like to engage with other human beings, not just a product. Yeah, it's more engagement. Um, I think, Ms. Anna, we're going to uh, tackle just one question before we end up. Um, what are some of the more modern and effective touch points for tech brands? For tech brands? Yeah. Ah, interesting. Yeah. Um, for tech brands, I think the most important thing to do is really get into the thought leadership space. Very, very important. Uh, because it is a product that needs to be... Um, it's a product that needs to be explained. It's a product that uh, needs to build momentum as well. Uh, and so uh, what we do, what we've been doing for some of our clients is um, we, we create thought leadership. And this is what AIM does as well. You guys do it beautifully, by the way. Thank you. Uh, is where you focus, no, but honestly, this is where you focus on certain topics, you know, and, and really hone in on them. So when I was working with the municipality, for example, we were looking at smart cities, IOT, you know, we we're talking about sustainability, we're talking about, uh, you know, digital technology and how to build communities that are connected, you know. Uh, and so uh, anytime you're in the tech space, you have to do, to do it with knowledge, you know, working uh, with a platform, where people can come in, they can engage. There could be white papers that could come out of something. It's so important to, to issue white papers. I, when I was, a, when I was a, a bureau chief of Gulf News here, uh, I, used, I had my reporters and, and we really loved white papers. The minute I get a white paper from an entity, I give it to a reporter and I say, here, make that a story. And so you need to really engage. And this is one area maybe that I didn't talk about, 
But guys, make sure you get your uh, digital marketing sorted out, your search engine optimization, your keywords, your link building, your content creation. And here with things like uh, uh, white papers, with communiques that go out, with video content, you can really start owning a certain space. Really wonderful. Um, Ms. Anna, I think we have to uh, end this now. We are running out of time. <laughs> but um, for sure, ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Anna will address all the unanswered questions right after the webinar. And really, really thank you so much, Ms. Anna, for very, very knowledgeable sessions and workshop today. Really appreciate You're it. You're so welcome. And good luck, everyone. I hope you thrive in this economy. Yes, thank you. Yeah, and I would like to thank also our audience for joining us and sharing their questions. And the link to today's webinar video and presentation will be sent to you via email. And we are also conducting a short survey to get your feedback on today's webinar. And the link to the survey will be shared with you via the chat and via email. And so please do visit our website, www.incongress.com slash webinars and to stay updated to our upcoming webinars. And also follow us on our social media channels to keep yourself updated. And thank you all once again, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you, Ms. Anna. Have a good day. Salam. Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye.